hello everybody out there all of my brothers and sisters on YouTube as well as Facebook once again this is your um, friend and brother Roosevelt Slaughter with another Roosevelt Sounds Off and this is Roosevelt Sounds Off part 7 and on today you're probably wondering even though I'm everybody who knows me personally knows that I'm um, known I guess for wearing bold and bright colors but you're probably wondering how come I'm wearing red on today that's because out of the season that we just celebrated, which was um, last month, because when you're seeing this, this is being taped um, around the middle of March. And I don't know when you'll be seeing it. You might be seeing this later or however it is. And, um, you know, we just out, got out of celebrating Valentine's Day. And I've been preparing a lesson. Um, I'm wearing red because I want to teach a lesson about relationships because that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I entitled this lesson, The Right Reason for a Relationship, Part 1. I'll say it again. The Right Reason for Relationship. And basically during this um, teaching, I'm going to give um, some vital points on um, relationships, how I feel that relationships should not be um, anything agenda based meaning that you should not be with a person only because of how they look because of how they dress how much money they have because the sex is good with the person or um, or just you shouldn't be just relying on a person to make you whole at all like a whole lot of people try to do it seems like in our community or just I'm not gonna say just the black community because I think that it happens all over that um, it seems like, you know, to me, that a whole lot of women, in order to get men or to keep their men, a whole lot of them ignore their children and ignore their families and everything just to hold on to this man. And, you know, likewise, men do it as well just to hold on to a woman. But I, what I'm going to attempt to do through this teaching is to um, teach that you have to be a whole person before you can invite another person to be with you. And most of all, hold within yourself and love yourself. But most of all, serve and love God. And um, my foundational scripture for this teaching is Colossians chapter 2. And uh, my reader is going to be um, start off reading at verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body, and ye are complete in him. Now, now you see, in him, not a man, not a woman, you are complete. Anything else with that? Which is the head of all principality and power. So in God, you are complete, not a person. And I know... Um, now, in the next part, this is part one, but in the next part, I'm going to get off into more detail about what you should look for in a person or, you know, certain things you should be attracted to, certain things you should not be attracted to. But I've always believed that I cannot go forth with telling anyone anything or giving advice to anyone until I start off with myself first. Um... Because I'm going to, about to be very transparent in part one. I'm going to give you a quick story or quick testimony as to something that happened to me through almost three years ago that was pretty bad. But even though it was bad, I have good news. I learned a couple of things through the whole ordeal. But, you know, the thing is what happened to me for all of you all who, some of you all who are close to me now, but for the benefit of some of you all who don't know is that um, a three, about three years ago, this is 2011, I had a bad infection in my leg and I ended up, wound up in the hospital, had to have surgery. And then I wound up in a rehabilitation center slash nursing home, learning how to walk again and everything for a month and a half. I was in a wheelchair. Then after that, I graduated to a uh, um, walker, then a cane, and then eventually nothing. And then this was a very, very bad ordeal. I mean, I think that it did cost me some relationships with some friends and even some family. Because one thing about it is, when you're sick and when you're down, you know who's strictly there for you. You know who's not. So I'm pretty sure some of you all have been there. So I'm pretty sure you all can testify to that too. 
And when I got out of the rehabilitation center, about, about three weeks or so, someone magically, it was a woman, a young lady named Londa, came across my path. Well, really, I was introduced to her by a friend of mine named Dee Dee. And um, we were introduced at um, Dee Dee's son's birthday party because I was there taking pictures at his birthday party because that's what Dee Dee hired me to do because I do take pictures as well. And um, I ran across her. She introduced me to her friend, Londa. And, you know, we started talking and everything and found out that we had actually known each other and had dated a little bit, you know, when we were much younger at the time. It was like when we first met, it was 1994, I was 20, and she was around 18. But at the time, um, her mother, did, I guess, didn't think that she should have time for a relationship or really wanted her to stay focused and about school and that kind of thing. And my parents was trying to get me to do the same thing. And so I guess we can kind of blame my parents somewhat a little bit about that one. But I was happy to have ran into her again, you know, 15, 16 years later in 2011. Because I was thinking, because, you know, some of us have fallen into the trap of even listening to, you know, certain preachers and even certain gospel songs like, um, you know, Donald Lawrence had a song, you know, for all of your trouble, you know, the blessings double just for you. And, um. You know, you have a whole lot of preachers that teach and stuff that when you go through trouble, double for your trouble, triple for your ripple, all this kind of stuff. God's going to repay you all the bad things. God's going to give you um, back every single thing that the devil stole from you. You, you know, we're told that when, after we have gone through, you know, bad trials and tribulations. So at the time, I think the only thing I was looking for was something good and a blessing to come into my life. Because I'm thinking this is a second chance. You know, why wouldn't this be a blessing? And so um, we did plan a first date. And so me and this young lady, we did go out to Navy Pier and everything. We ate outside at a little pizza place and everything. It was very nice. And, um, you know, we watched fireworks and that kind of thing. And, you know, we still hung around for a month and everything. But all the time, I feel myself feeling much more attracted to this person, much more attracted to Londa. I was starting to get feelings. I mean, with Londa, this is somebody who I feel I could have married because it. I can't explain it all to you all or whatever. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of you all have been there, but it's like, I mean, to me, she was perfect in everything, in every single kind of way and everything to me. It didn't matter to me whether she was, you know, because she was considered to be, by the world standards, you know, overweight. It didn't matter to me at all. This is somebody who I could have married, definitely. Because I found myself, you know, when I was talking to her or trying to date her at the time, um, taking other females' numbers out of my phone and deleting certain pictures off of my phone that were kind of questionable. I'm pretty sure that you know what I mean there. And plus, with her... One thing I didn't get caught up into, and I'm proud to say that I didn't, is the whole sexual thing. And I have to say for her, I really didn't have any sexual feelings at all because I was trying to do this one a whole lot different than I did other ones. Because other ones, I mean, I've had, I mean, I've, even though I was raised to know better, I've had my share of one night stands and doing stuff that my parents, you know, have, you know, warned me against. And I know I was raised in a good Bible-believing Christian home for some of you all who, out, who are out there on Facebook who I have gone to church with. You know my parents, Brother and Sister Slaughter. And I think that you know that they raised me in the right way and to go in the right direction. But, you know, just like every single other kind of kid, there's sometimes whenever you're growing up, you tend to kind of go your own way. And that's sometimes what I did in certain circles. But, you know, with this one... I wanted to do something a little bit different. I was just enjoying her, enjoying spending time around her, enjoying, you know, us going out, enjoying the time and everything that we spent together. You know, that's all you, ha I was trying not to get caught up in the whole sexual thing because one thing I'm trying to teach even in this series 
is that you can't get caught up into someone only just because of sexual reasons or sexual needs and all because you have a need and that kind of thing because then you're going to find yourself making mistakes but I'm getting sort of ahead of myself there um but yeah we did you know hang around I hung around her house and you know with her and everything and I was starting to get you know feelings except one day like a month later after we started going out she had called me on the phone it was the afternoon he said she wanted to see me so I said, okay, I'm, I'm thinking that I go all, because I live on the southwest side, and she lived on the west side. And I take the bus all the way to the west side, because I'm thinking that we're going to hang out and everything like we always do. And as soon as I come in and I sit down on the couch, this is when she lowers the boom on me. Tells me that her cousin introduced her to someone else. And it's almost like, what can I say, brothers and sisters, my heart just like, sank. I think it's even worse than sank. And I'm not, by me saying, giving this next example or analogy, I'm dare not trying to ever make fun of anybody who's lost anyone close to them. But I'm pretty sure that everyone has had the feeling of losing someone close to you. And you know how when you get that feeling when someone has told you that this loved one has passed on or something, how you feel that numbness or something. It's hard to describe but that's how I felt. Only thing I could say to that, I just kept asking why. I mean, she just said or something. Well, you know, you I don't have them kind of feelings and everything towards you, but all the time I was thinking and everything that she did, and because that's what I thought I was led to believe. And um, only thing I could get up and say, okay, I think I'll be leaving now. And uh, th at the time, that's all I could do was just get up and leave. But all the time I was walking to the bus stop and um, it seemed like I was walking. I knew I was walking because I was getting closer to the bus stop, but it felt like I wasn't completely like in my body. And I got on, my, uh, got on the bus and I called a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, a couple of good friends of mine who helped to talk me through at least until I got home because trust me, my mind wasn't right. And I would have to say for me, that hurt a whole lot more than me having to learn how to walk all over again. And I admit, because I can admit certain mistakes I made in the whole thing too, that maybe after this, because the only thing is, I just wanted to know why. And I guess I just wanted closure. Because I knew I hadn't done anything to her or anything like that. Never, It was never my intention to really hurt her. Or just like it was never my intention to hurt anyone, tell you the truth. And... Um, I guess I just wanted closure. That's all I basically wanted. And so I guess I asked why, so I kept calling her and texting her. I even went as far as to write her a letter. And that's why she didn't want to have anything to do with me at all, even on a friendship level, because she felt like I disrespected her and her so-called boyfriend at the time. Only, I don't know how I disrespected him because he never saw the letter. So, I mean, that does, uh, you know, I, I don't think that that, washes too much and we did have to it, it, check this out y'all she had surgery in August and anybody who knows me in church or even people who I have gone to the lodge with and you could just be a plain friend a family member everybody knows that Roosevelt if I have knowledge that you are sick or you're in the hospital Roosevelt's going to come and see you and Roosevelt's going to do his best to come and see you if I have knowledge of it and she would not allow me to come and see her in the hospital, thinking that I'm going to do something or cause a problem with her and her boyfriend. When she knows, if she had known me from years ago and known me from even right now, that I'm not even that type of person to do such a thing, you know, as that. And then she finally did let me see her after her surgery was over, and this was the second week of September. And she got a chance to tell me some things that she didn't like about me. And, you know, she basically, you know, told me that I was sort of clingy. And I don't know, maybe I was. Because I guess anytime I saw somebody or see someone who I like, if I'm interested in you or think you're interested in me or whatever, I mean, that's just what sometimes what you do whenever you like somebody. You don't be meaning to, or you might not have, <clears throat> excuse me, any intentions on being clingy. But I mean, it just comes all out in that certain way. 
and also she told me that, boy, you just have knowledge of too many other even different religions. And I'm going to explain that. Because when I was in the nursing home, people in my old church didn't come to see me, didn't call me, anything. So I guess I didn't have the urge to go back to that church after I had gotten out the nursing home. So I thought about, you know, begin to think that, especially uh, add on to what this whole thing with happening with Lyndon and everything, I began to think that the church was a lie, was a farce, was every single kind of thing. So I considered maybe going into some other religion, either the Islamic faith or maybe the Baha'i faith. But a good friend of mine got me to, you know, talk me into trying a regular Christian church one more time, so I ended up joining that church around July, so that's what I did. And I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the All Nations Choir, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Matter of fact, some of you all in All Nations um, are even my Facebook friends. Shout out to everybody at ANC, right? So, and I had to tell her that doesn't have anything to do with her, because, I mean, last time I checked, we still do have freedom of religion in this country. And I guess all the time and everything, I couldn't let this whole thing go about how hurt I was and everything. So I guess she got tired of hearing it after a while. And um, to this day and everything that we don't talk, even though we were friends and everything before. But I could safely say, like I said, there's still, out of all of that long story, for me that there's still good news. I learned a couple of things. One thing I learned is sometimes... You don't want to wait until a tragic event or you don't want to have a tragic event happen to you and then you try to make a decision on a partner or on a um, you know, relationship or anything like that when you're going through a hard time, you know, like a sickness or, or maybe a death of a loved one or going through a bad bankruptcy or even going through a bad breakup sometimes you need time alone to think about certain things and just meditate on certain things all by yourself so i think that i made a bad decision on that you know just coming out of a bad thing because the only thing i was looking for was just my good or my better that's all i was looking for I had gone through something bad and I was just looking for something better. So that's something that you don't want to do. That's mistake number one that you don't want to make is making a decision when you're going through or just when you have just come out of a hard time until you are mentally and spiritually healthy enough to, you know, call yourself trying to date again. And I thought that another mistake I made, I thought that Londa, by me knowing her from before, and me reconnecting with her now, I thought that this is one person out of all the other women who I've known in the whole world that could never ever hurt me. But, you know, I was wrong about that because I realized that Londa, just like any, like me, just like you or anybody else, just like any one of us, was just a person or a human being that's capable of, you know, making mistakes or misjudgments and everything at the time. And she's just a person. That's how come I had my reader read the foundational scripture that in him, if somebody's not next to you, tap them and say him, talking about God or Jesus himself, has come to make us one. We are one. In God or in Jesus not one within another person because one thing I have found out in my 40 years of living is that people all the time will fail you but God will never fail because you know what's impossible with man is always possible with God God will never ever fail you and I was just I don't know just looking for my good just looking to have a good relationship with a woman but my third mistake, and I think this is one of my main ones that's going to lead to my other scripture, is that all this time, I guess because I've had had a problem dating by me being, you know, in case you all don't know, by me being disabled and, you know, being pretty much like trampled upon and put down and looked over by 
men and women and every single body in society. And I felt that I was left out of the whole, you know, love situation. And I feel like some kind of a way I was cheated. That maybe I didn't, was searching so hard for a woman or for a relationship that I did not put God first. And I didn't seek the wisdom and seek God, you know, hard enough. And this is going to lead to my other scripture. What's that other scripture uh, right there that, uh, you know, I'm, that's going to go according to this lesson? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You, you, you see that? I, you have to seek the kingdom. You can't just seek after man. You can't just seek after a woman. This is something I have learned and still am trying to learn in everything right now because like I always tell you that none of us is perfect and none of our hands has been completely clean. So this is still something I'm learning right now and I'm trying to put this kind of a thing to good works. And going back to my first point, that sometimes when you want good or want something so badly, that after a while, if you're not careful, you will start to ignore certain red flags. Like the first red flag, even with Londa, was on our first date that I didn't tell you all about from the story. On our first date, she actually put her hands on me physically where she pinched me. Well, I was doing something at the time. I was probably doing something that most people would consider to be wrong, but several other friends of mine said that, shoot, I don't care what you were doing. No one has the right to put their hands on you. And what, what happened was we were walking down the hallways of Navy Pier. And we were walking on one side, me and her, and then there was other people walking on the other side. But other people kept on walking into me, almost knocking me over. And at the time, you know, I had just gotten out of the rehabilitation center. So I was just learning how to walk again. So my leg was still kind of weak. So I almost fell over even a couple of times. So after a while, I get tired of it. And then I had this umbrella with me, and this umbrella has a very, very sharp metal point on the end of it. So what I did, I just held out the umbrella on my left side in front of me, and you should have seen people was up there just dodging that point, because they didn't want to get poked. They was just dodging, like bobbing and weaving. And then all of a sudden, Lana was like, Roosevelt, Roosevelt. I'm like, what? Then she reached and grabbed me by this arm, sunk her nails into my skin, and start twisting and told me and mumbled up under her breath, just like this, you all. Don't ever do that again when I'm with you. I said, yeah, but look at my, I don't care what they're doing, she told me. Don't ever do that again when you're with me. Everybody who I tell this story to said, boy, what's the matter with her? You ain't her child. But at the time, I guess I thought because I wanted Londa so bad and wanted things to work so bad, I thought that this was okay to do. But obviously it wasn't because you tend to ignore, you know, red flags. When you want something or someone so bad, you tend to ignore that little lie they might have told you. You tend to ignore the fact that they could have put their hands on you. You tend to ignore that they don't like your children. You tend to Ignore a whole lot of things that you should be paying attention to. Whatever you want it so bad. So my challenge in this is to teach you not to want something so bad and to get caught up in your own agenda. And even with Londa, when we talked again, like months down the road, she told me that my, her biggest concern about me, because she said I was always a nice person. That's something that she can't put on me and say I was mean or anything like that but she says that she didn't know whether I could be a good provider because I guess I didn't have a whole lot of money and couldn't do this and couldn't do that and I don't think that it's right to rely on someone just for that for money purposes and everything either now I'm not trying to say that it doesn't take money to be in a relationship or money to get married anything like that you know I'm not saying that but you know, just like a whole lot of men run after women for sex or they pervert the act of sex and use sex in the wrong way. You have a whole lot of women that pervert the money issue 
and they think that they can just come to the table just any kind of way with nothing. They just because it's the man that the man is supposed to do every single thing that they can sit back on their fat lazy behinds and don't have to do a thing. I mean, but a friend of mine, she told me that she's so everybody's so concerned about you as the man as to what you have. What does she have? What is she bringing to the table? And this is a woman and several other women who told me this. If anybody is going to be with anyone, two people, it takes two. This is a 50-50 thing. This is not the man doing every single thing. This is not supposed to even be the woman doing every single thing. We work together as a whole. We rise together. We fall down together. No matter what it is, we reach our fate together. It's not only on one person. And so that's what I'm trying to get you all to see in this series. And that's what I'm going to be teaching more of. And that's the lessons that I learned in this um, whole thing. Is not to want a person or a certain thing so bad that I ignore red flags. And um, always, most of all, um, just to try your best. To put God first, you know, love yourself, um, rediscover yourself, do something, you know, get to start feeling proud of yourself again. And that's what I'm starting to do, because even by me doing this, even by me talking about this story, this is something, this is not to, you know, talk down upon anyone. This is not to disrespect anyone, especially Londa or any other woman or anybody. But this is something that I'm doing to also help me heal as a person by saying when testifying to what I have been through, what I saw, and what I learned behind it. Because I think that a whole lot of us in life, we're going to go through a whole lot of things. But it's a case of whether you learn from the thing, good or bad, that you go through, that we have to go through every single day. If you learn from it, it's almost like that's the best thing in the whole world. Okay, amen. I'd like to thank uh, my reader for reading that part in um, those scriptures. And this is only part one because I am going to be getting into part two. And I'm just going to give you a sequel of part two. But I'm going to be talking about the certain things of what to do in relationships and what not to do and what to look for. And I'm going to be dealing in the next one with regular dating. And I'm even especially going to be dealing even in interracial dating and explore the topic of interracial dating and say if you're interracially dating what you look for and what you don't look for and the, basically the main thing I'm going to be teaching is that or trying to teach is to if you get involved in a relationship or marry someone like the Bible says you love the person as a whole not for just anything else and I'm going to get more into that in part two but meanwhile this was Roosevelt with part one of the right reason for relationship. Um, may God bless all of you all out there on Facebook and YouTube. And for all of you all who have watched this and enjoy what I'm saying, feel free to comment. I would appreciate your comments, whether it's bad, whether it's good. I would absolutely love it. And be sure to um, watch and share this video with others. Hopefully I've um, um, taught something and um, hopefully that you've learned something on today. And stay tuned for the next Roosevelt Sounds Off Part 8 and um, Part 2 of this lesson where I will be teaching on the right reason for relationship. God bless you. See you all later.